If you're serious about investing in real estate, you've come to the right place. It's a tough and yet very rewarding business, but to succeed, you really have to know your stuff. My name is Tom Lundstedt, and I first learned about real estate investing way back when I was a rookie Major League Baseball player. We didn't make the millions of dollars today's players do, not even close. Plus, I wasn't that great of a player, so I spent most of my time sitting in the bullpen where the pitchers and catchers who aren't playing go. And luckily, there was an old, old pitcher on our team. I think he was about 35, who had done pretty well investing in real estate. While the games were going on, he and I would talk about investing, and that really fired me up. As a matter of fact, it fired me up so much that I've been involved in buying, owning, managing, and speaking about rental property ever since. I've spoken to more than 2,500 real estate audiences from sea to shining sea, and I'm always amazed at how, even though things like interest rates, rents, expenses, and local markets are always changing, the fundamentals of real estate investing remain constant. To help people master these fundamentals, I've developed a series of CDs and study guides. They aren't a bunch of get-rich-quick baloney, they're the real deal. The fundamentals are time-tested and true, and they're a must for anyone who plans to succeed as a real estate investor. At the website, howtoinvestinrealestate.org, you'll see a sample of some of the information found in my CD programs. By using a terrific one-page, easy-to-use investment property worksheet, I'll show you how to analyze a property before you buy to determine if it makes financial sense. Topics such as cash flow, tax shelter, depreciation, cap rates, and return on equity will all be covered. We'll even cover how to use your IRA to buy and sell real estate. I can't believe how few people know they can do that. Now, before we go any further, I've got to put in a disclaimer. We're going to discuss some important tax issues, and I want to make it clear right up front that I'm not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, or other professional services. Everyone's situation is unique. So, before you take any action, please take the ideas you learn here and discuss them with your tax manager to see how they fit your unique situation. I'm saying tax manager on purpose. I'm talking about someone who help you manage your tax situation, not just prepare your tax return. So, let's get going. Whether you're a rookie investor or a seasoned pro, once the dust settles, I hope this website, plus the CDs and study guides, will help turn you into an all-star real estate investor. Okay, let's get started. What you're seeing here is part of a seminar I presented to a group of realtors. We use the investment property worksheet to analyze the four financial benefits of owning a rental property. Those four benefits are cash flow, principal reduction, income tax savings, and appreciation. This fourth chapter deals with the topic of appreciation, plus how to figure your rate of return. We'll be using the same example that we use in each of the other chapters. A woman named Janet who is considering the purchase of a $130,000 small apartment building. The terms require $18,000 cash invested and a loan of $112,000 at an interest rate of 9.5%. The payments are $945 per month. In previous chapters, we've already covered how to figure the cash flow, principal reduction, and income tax savings. So, in order for this chapter to make the most sense, it would be best for you to listen to those other three chapters first. Now, don't get all hung up about all the minute details or whether these numbers would be realistic in your specific area. Just follow along and concentrate on how it all works. Once you know how it works, you can apply these same techniques to any rental property in any market, big or small. Here we go. Appreciation is frosting on the cake, but the cake ought to taste good by itself. So with no appreciation, look down at the bottom. Here's your return on investment without appreciation. It says add up the cash flow before tax, 1425, plus the print reduction, 731, plus the tax savings, 1345, if you do that, that's 3,501. What would she be investing to get 3,501? 18,000. If you do that, that's about 19% on her money. That's 19% on her money before what? What before any ah, appreciation? How much of this 3,501 dollars is cash? 
Well, now the cash flow, 1425, that's cash, isn't it? What could Janet do with that 1425 if she didn't need the money? What if Janet says, I'm a young woman, what do I need 1425 right now in my life for? What's one thing she could do besides a weekend in Decatur? Well, conservative play, could she pay extra on her mortgage? It's an extra 120 bucks a month on her mortgage. How about the 731 principal? Is that uh, uh, cash? That's not cash. She doesn't get that money to when? Sells or maybe refinances. But it's a benefit. Her net worth goes up 731, so that's good. It's just not a current benefit. And then how about the 1345 tax savings? Is that cash? Sure. When does she get that 1345? At the end of the year in a refund. Or with proper tax management, could she change her withholding or her quarterly estimate such that she never pays it in? Yes. In either way, that's cash. What could she do with that 1345 cash if she didn't need the money? Could she pay extra on the mortgage? What if Janet said, I'm going to take the 1425 and the 1345 and pay extra on my mortgage? That's almost $250 a month extra on the mortgage. Do you know how fast you'd pay that property off? It'd be paid for you before you know it. And once it's paid for, who will have paid for it for her? Well, whose money is the 1425? That's her money. That's her profit. Whose money is the 731? That's the tenants. Whose money is the 1345? The IRS. The IRS says, ah, we'll help you buy it too. You got three people paying for it. <laughs> Once it's paid for, will it provide her income for how long? The rest of her life. How much income? 12765 the net operating income. It'll, it'll provide her the equivalent of, it's inflation proof, 12765 the rest of her life. How many of you, your lives would be different right now if you own three rental properties in your town free and clear? Is that doable? Is that at, don't tell me it's not doable. Tell me you don't want to do it, that's fine, but don't tell me it's not doable. And it doesn't have to be three, it could be 30, it could be one. But uh, absolutely, it's doable. If Janet maintains this property, will it provide her children income the rest of their lives? If they maintain this property, will it provide her grandchildren income the rest of their lives? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. Let me ask you a question. Don't you wish your grandparents had taken continuing ed? <laughs> what you've just watched is one small section of my investment real estate seminar. In the full seminar, I show you how to use a terrific investment property worksheet to analyze a rental property. The worksheet will help you calculate the four financial benefits of owning investment real estate. Those four financial benefits are cash flow, principal reduction, income tax savings, and appreciation. And the beauty is you can do all that analysis before you buy to make sure the property makes financial sense and you're not paying too much. In this section, we combine the four benefits to determine a property's rate of return. Be sure to go to my website, howtoinvestinrealestate.org, for some great information about how to calculate each of the four benefits individually. I promise you'll learn something and maybe even get a few laughs. If you're already on that website, keep reading and we'll move on to the next topic.